see that there's a rich variety of Taiwan indigenous languages. Every, diff, every language has new names. They are not mutually um, intellectual. Um, they are not mutually comprehensible. So if I'm from Taiwan, and Jingxuan from Rukai, what he's talking, I can't understand at all. Taiwan, over here. Okay. The current situation of uh, indigenous language in Taiwan can be described by uh, a quote. Um, uh, I, I quote a saying from the our former minister of cultural indigenous people, uh, Yohani. He say um, he thinks that the indigenous language are nearly extinct. As if they are lying, as if as if they are lying in the intensive care unit. So this is how serious it is. Um, this is um, Mr. On the on the picture. This is our current Minister of Council of Indigenous People. Um, he's from the Puma tribe. And from you can see from the. Um, the picture in red, this is one of his publication. In his book, he gives a um, very critical viewpoint about why our language are endangered. Then I'll um, read a sentence for you. The rapid loss of indigenous languages in Taiwan has occurred during the last 40 years. The approach that I uh, used to deal with the indigenous indigenous policy was an active cons um, counseling or interfering. The most critical was that the purpose of the education policy concerning cultural development was not about helping the indigenous people to understand our own culture. Instead, its goal was to separate us from our own tradition and then integrate into so-called the mainstream society. This is a typical example of assimilation. Um, I'll give you a story. Um, this is my personal experience. Um, when I was a kid, um, since I was a kid, uh, in the school, we were taught in Mandarin Chinese. So um, if 